Recently, I was called out to do a straight sword hilt run. At first, it was haha funny, but what if I just cheated? No challenge runner would dare cheat and face the YouTube comment section. Fortunately, I'm not a challenge runner, but a speed runner, and we already faced the not playing games legit allegations. So, I booted up Dark Souls Remastered and started a new game without routing anything out. This will surely not be an issue. For the starting class, I picked Cleric for a glitch here in like a minute. No Thief Black Firebomb start for once. Because of this, I grabbed the Master Key as a starting gift to access areas early. Time to escape prison like in the movie Shawshank Redemption. I've never actually seen the movie, so I don't know if that's a spoiler. You may have noticed this looks like a normal playthrough. Look, I even ran past the Asylum Demon going the proper way. What, I'm picking up items in a street sword run? I run up the staircase, triggering the boulder to speak to Oscar so I can progress. Okay, uh, let me explain. I forgot I was doing a straight sword hilt run, and I kinda just started killing the enemies like normal. I realized this after killing the Hollow Archer with style and reset at the bonfire. Run invalid, so uh, I totally started a new game. I needed access to the upper Solemn Fog Gate, so I spent a couple minutes fighting the Hollows. Two minutes to be exact, but it will be worth it. Now I'm not going to kill the Asylum Demon, but how? Well, uh, honestly, I, I don't know how it works. I enter the fog gate from a certain position. Once in, I perform a heavy attack to fall off before I perform a plunging attack. Most of the time it looked like this, but not after too long I got the glitch. Let me show it in action because it is great. This is true asylum skip, but I need to get down safely still. I roll off, aiming for this pillar. I quit out, resetting the hollows, I don't want them to push me off. From this pillar, I roll down to the other side of the asylum door and escape to Firelink. First I pick up this soul for later before using the bird travel, the fastest travel. This is going to be a big surprise, but I head down the Firelink stairs towards the Valley of the Drakes. For the sake of not being too repetitive, I'm not covering the glitches I have explained in other videos. In the description, I will have links explaining the glitch, or you can watch one of my other videos. I perform a soul dupe giving me only 19k souls. The number is small, but I'm going to invest it to make it bigger. This is where that master key comes into play if you did not know. I grab this soul, the EP souls, and the red tier stone ring. RTSR increases your damage by 50% when your health is below 20%. I used it like twice in this run, but you know, it was a nice swat. I make my way into the dark root basin where there's not much to report. The speed run shield, or uh, I mean the grass crest shield that increases stamina and recovery is picked up. The entire hunter starting class besides the sword and shield. What is important is the bow, this will be very useful later. I spent a while trying to get this lizard to fall off the cliff. They have a chance to drop a titanite chunk or a large titanite shard. I get the chunk drop, uh, but I never used it. Maybe I should have routed this run out. Oh well, let's go to Andre. I do a lot at Andre that will help throughout this run, so let me cover the important things. First, I buy 999 wooden arrows for quantity storage duping. I get the upgrade material to bring the hill to plus 5. I dupe all the souls in my inventory by 999 each. This gives me a little under 4 million souls, and with this newfound generational wealth, I buy the Crest of Artorias. I realize I did a dumb negative quantity storage and tried to negative dupe the Cestus instead. It looked like I did it correctly, but apparently I was buying 99 war picks. I don't know why that happened, but it is fine. I still have an excess amount of souls that I use at the Undead Parish Bonfire. I had a vague idea of what I was going to level, and ended up with 24 Vitality, 60 Intelligence, 30 Faith, and 48 Endurance. There's an item I need to grab, so I head back to Firelink with a shortcut. Before I left, I grabbed the Firekeeper Soul, and this was very useful, but I did not know this at the time. For the first time in a long time, I head to the Undead Burg. In the Burg, I speak to the Undead Merchant to grab the house key. For those familiar with this game, it's obvious with all that intelligence, right? Clearly, I go into the House of the Gold Pine Risen Chest before heading down Havel's Tower to get back to the Undead Parish. It would have been faster to warp back to Firelink and use the elevator, but I wanted to grab this soul in the basin. Here is where I noticed the negative quantity dupe was weird. I looked for my Cestus, but I had a warp pick instead. I went with the war picks and it worked. I duped the gold pine resin in 99 which is what I wanted so I went to work on the rest of the run. I make my way to the gargoyles who block the next item I want. One of the worst rooms in the game is not enough to stop me and they're even nice enough to give me an RTSR setup. Gargoyles are an early boss, it should not be that hard right? 
I died over and over again, but the damage was not bad. Just a skill issue. The thing that sucked was the uh, room before the gargoyles really though. I had to go through it every time I died and reset RTSR. Then I remembered something, one of the reasons I thought this run would be interesting. There's a new Dark Souls Remaster glitch that I know can help. Once again, I don't know what causes this glitch, but I will explain how to perform it. First, let me go over the keybinds. Up at the top where it says controller, you can switch which control keybinds are being changed. There are controller keybinds, keyboard and mouse keybinds, and keyboard and mouse alternative keybinds. Who was going to tell me there was all girls? Sorry, I mean alternative binds that allow two different inputs to be put on one action. This is useful as two action keybinds need to be pressed. Yes, this can be done with the controller action bind and the M and K action bind, but I find two keyboard buttons easier to press. I have the alt action bind set to T and the regular action bind still on the default E. With these binds, I equip the bow and zoom in while walking in the left corner of the door frame. I aim for where the fog and the door frame on the right join while looking as far down as the game lets me. Setups are very important for this glitch because the angle the character is facing will change the entry. I drop an item before the keybinds I explained earlier finally come up. I frame perfect, press the two actions at the same time. When done correctly, I pick up the item and enter the fog gate with a weird spin. I face through the wall and avoid the AI triggers so I can just beat up the first gargoyle. However, the second gargoyle is active and I almost die. But I clutch it out. I ring the bell of awakening to talk to Oswald who sells Velka's talisman. This talisman is weird because instead of scaling with faith, it scales with intelligence. That explains the 60 and I must also be planning to use spell buffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally doing that and I did not forget spells like that exist in this game. Uh, oops. I should explain why I did this. When formulating this run, I wanted to do it in Prepare to Die, but decided not to. I kept some of that routing, which included this talisman, but the canvas talisman I started with would have been better for miracles only. I was going to infuse the sword hilt with enchanted to scale event. I would then tumble buff a miracle buff on the weapon for an even bigger damage output. I could not move swap and tumble buff a weapon so I decided to run remastered instead. And by run remastered I literally booted up the game after finding out I could not do what I wanted and prepare to die and just started a new game. Back to the run which is only going to get more cursed. Trust me. After warping back to the undead parish I performed sin's gate skip. Sin's fortress of what even powers this place goes well as I grab the soul at the start and run for the area. I get up to the boulder where I could just quit out but I have HP so I decided to backstep the boulder. That is a lot of damage but basic heal is pretty good in this game with broken stats. In the outside section of Sin's I grab a soul before continuing on to the random merchant. I buy large shards from him after soul duping. This will not be useful, but the green blossoms I buy are useful. I remember to grab the bonfire where I leveled up my endurance to 56 and leave to fight Iron Golem. But wait, I have another soul I forgot to dupe, so I head back to do some more leveling. My intelligence is now at 99 and my endurance is 65. If only the intelligence stat translated to real life because of that would have saved me a lot of time. Speaking of time, it is Iron Golem time. This boss was a struggle in this run, but first I take out the giant up top. This will stop the boulders from getting hurled down at me during the fight. Before entering the fog gate, I apply gold pine resin and eat some grass. Legally distinct tower knight is not too resistant to lightning, but the damage is still bad. But I don't need to deal damage to their entire health bar if they fall. Every attempt, I can get at least one fall, but I just need them to be in that right place. Eventually, after several attempts, the golem slips on the banana peel I placed, giving me the victory. And Orlando time. I sure hope this place is not eight up hours of my life. I don't do anything fancy here and go the normal way. Okay, I, I do Namu Rafters. I said do Namu Rafters. Arriving at the giant elevator, I turn it twice so I can head to the Dark Moon Tomb. I grab the bonfire before opening the illusionary wall by jumping into this corner and quitting out. This removes the illusionary wall without the ring so I can head down to the Gwendolyn boss gate and perform another pick up and enter. You know that glitch from earlier for the gargoyles say I break, you remember? Well this time, I line up into the right corner and zoom in with the bow placing the weird crosshair in this spot. The item is dropped and the glitch is performed, but it is different this time. Passing through the door frame, I start walking up before sprinting and jumping out the fog gate. Gwendolyn's cutscene that triggers the fight is massive, so it needs to be jumped over. I don't really know what I'm doing here and what to do to make it consistent. 
most of the time when I got what looked like a good jump, I ended up hitting the cutscene trigger. Let me explain what I was thinking by attempting towards when I finally got it. After getting the spin, I would wait a bit after hitting the left door frame before holding forward. I would then look a little to the left but not too far. Once I did that, I started to sprint forward and then jump as soon as the stamina bar starts to go down with a W plus A jump. This took me around an hour and 25 minutes to finally get the proper jump. If you wonder why I did not want to make this a speed run, well, this is why. Finally past the cutscene trigger, there is no Gwendolyn, but I am not here to fight. I came for the Sunlight Blade Miracle to buff the Sword Hilt. This spell adds lightning damage equal to the magic adjust of your talisman multiplied by 1.8. Also, I grabbed my favorite armor, the Brass Set, before leaving to complete the rest of An Orlando. The Armored Golem, because I can't read Gargoyle correctly, is easily avoided. I make my way up the buttresses towards the Silver Knight Snipers, but a quit out works to cheese them. Just jump from the second window to the third while quitting out. Once loaded back in, move forward to bait the thrust attack so they fall off. I don't really do anything in the interior section of Van Orlando, so let's move on to the Godskin Duo copy. Fighting two opponents is kinda cringe, so I'll just say I break them instead. There are multiple ways to AI break ONS, but I'm gonna use the pickup and enter, obviously. I enter the fight to trigger the cutscene so Ornstein will be spawned in. A quit out is done to bring me back outside the boss arena so I can break their AI. The glitch is performed like the others, but this time I use an angle of 40. How do I set up this angle? Well, uh, just go by eyesight. I failed the first try and got stuck, having to warp back to the last bonfire rested. Once I get back to the fog gate, I remember I have RTSR, so I set it up with a conveniently placed sentinel. Now let's try that glitch again with RTSR. When done right, I face through the wall on the right, avoiding the cutscene that triggers the fight. This is where I make a big mistake in the run. I decided it would be smart to use Sunlight Blade, you know, the lightning buff on Ornstein. He literally uses lightning, of course he is resistant. To be exact, his lightning resistance is 1747. This miracle also only has one use, so that is fun. Later in the run, I pick up a different buff that would have helped here, or I could have just used Charcoal Pine Resin if I had any. This is fine as long as the buff lasts for a while. After Ornstein is slain, I have to fight Super Smo because he regains his ability to think. I start the fight with RTSR doing some good damage considering I'm using the Sword Hilt. Thankfully Smo does not have as much lightning resist as Ornstein did. Things are going well until the buff runs out. Instantly, I realize I just messed up so I quick menu Gold Pine Resin into my hotbar like a PvP sweat. I also chug some Estus because I realize this fight is going to go on for a while. The fight did go on for a while as I fought Ornstein with only resin dealing 23 damage a hit. I am stubborn, like really stubborn. I should have quit out and reset the fight but I did not. Instead, I fought Smo for 7 minutes straight like this is some heroic legend in a D&D campaign. The whole point of this run was to make the sword hilt an easy run, but in the end I turned it into a challenge run by my own stupidity. I know you're waiting for the twist of how I died in the end, but no. Turns out I'm good at the Super Smo fight and defeated him first try like this. That does not earn a sub, I honestly don't know what will. I obtained the Lord Vessel and it has never felt more deserved. Also, Guinevere is here. Don't worry, I don't kill her. That would hurt the run here in a bit, so it is a good thing I did not. With the Vessel, I can now teleport, so with this newfound power, I want to grab some rings like that one game by From Software, Eternal Ring. The first ring I grab is the Hornet Ring by Artorias' Grave for that bonus 30% critical damage. I also don't kill the good dog because there is no reason to. She is spared today. The next thing on the chopping block is Havel's Ring. If you are going to be dripped out, you can at least be dripped out and fast rolling. I chop down Havel like a tree because for some reason it does the same damage as a backstab. With Havel's Ring, my equip load is increased by 50% of my max equip load or in other words I'm fast rolling now. When I got to this point, I had a thought because of the Ornstein fight that I should look up boss resistances. Gwen, Lord of Being Parried, has a lightning resistance of 1770. I could have pivoted in the spells at this point and grabbed the crystal magic weapon spell with the 10 catalyst, but remember, I forgot sorceries existed. Instead, I used a more convoluted but interesting way. I needed to let Anastasia die. For Lodtrek to kill her, I need to ring the two bells of awakening or get two specific firekeeper souls. Just so happens I grabbed one of them earlier in the undead parish. The other soul is in Blighttown and yeah, in hindsight I should have just fought Quaylog around the second bell. That would have been smart, but I did not do that. 
I picked up the Firekeeper Soul in Blighttown and returned to Firelink. Anastasia is dead, who could have seen this coming, but what is this black eye orb? Time to head back to Anne Orlando to murder the murderer. I died a couple of times, but turns out R1 spam is good. I just spammed the way at Law Trick until he was dead, but there were some close calls. For doing this good deed, I received a souvenir of appraisal. This is a Dark Moon Covenant item used to level up the Covenant, but I will need more. Don't you worry because the negative dupes I used earlier on the resin come into play again. I head to Andre and sue for the negative value before giving myself 99 souvenirs of appraisal. I head to the Dark Moon Tomb and try to enter the Covenant before I am reminded that I entered the Fog Gate and pissed Gwendolyn off. My good buddy Oswald can apologize for me because I have trouble socializing with people for just 100,000 souls. A small price to pay for friendship. I return to the tomb where I enter the Dark Moon Covenant and give all my souvenirs away. In return, I receive the best talisman in the game that I ignore and don't use, but also the best magic buff in the game, Dark Moon Blade. This buff adds magic damage to your weapon equal to your talisman's magic adjust and multiplied by your Covenant level buff. In this case, I should be at plus 3 in the Covenant, so it is multiplied by 2.1. Pretty strong considering Crystal Magic Weapon is 1.4 times a Catalyst Magic Adjust. There's something else I need to do before continuing the run. I didn't need to do this, but there had to be a happy ending. In Firelink, I revive Anastasia, and now I can continue on off the run. Remember when I said I could have just killed Quaylog and ring the bell? Yeah, that would have saved some time, because that is exactly what I want to do next. I won't skip the cutscene, I know why you are here. You fought. It is time to fight Quaylog and ring that bell. Quaylog is not very resistant to lightning and a low level boss, so she gets melted. I did not realize melted was a pun because she is all melted. That is pretty funny, almost as funny as someone explaining a joke. Quaylog goes down without a struggle, a breath of fresh air all things considered. I ring the second bell of awakening to wake the primordial serpent, whatever its name is, up. I let the giraffe creature vore me to Firelink Altar, where I place the Lord Vessel. Gwen is just on the other side of the door, but I need the four Lord Souls to open it up. Nah, I don't feel like fighting them, so instead, I will just teleport to the other side of the door. I can't really do Homeward Ron Warp, so I will do another Ron Warp. Force Quit Ron Warp is super easy to perform. Why in Firelink Altar, I use the Dark Sign to warp. The screen is obviously different, and there's a reason I'm capturing the game like this with light split open. While loading, I hit Alt plus Space to pause the game. Yeah, Dark Souls has a hidden pause mechanic. Live Split is reading the in-game time, so currently it has stopped. I keep letting go of Alt Space before immediately doing it again. I do this until I see the milliseconds go up before I close the game. This tricks the game to think something bad happened with the warp, so it warps me to the default failsafe location of the Firelink Altar. That position so happens to be on the other side of the door. Gwen is the only boss preventing me from beating the game. I use the Dark Moon Blade buff for the magic damage and go to town parrying Gwen. The damage is kinda low, but that is to be expected. I just need to finish Gwen before the buff's timer of a minute runs out. Maybe I should not be parrying consider how that eats up time, and there goes the buff. I have to resort to Gold Pine Resin for extra damage as I parry chain Gwen. The damage is so low, if only I was smart enough to have grabbed charcoal pine bundles for the fire damage. Surprisingly, Gwyn is less resistant to fire damage than he is to magic damage. If you remember from the Smo fight, I'm a stubborn person. I fought Gwyn like this for 4 minutes instead of resetting like I should've. Once again, I first tried the fight. I have practiced the Gwyn parry with the grass grass shield too much to miss a single parry. They really messed up making Gwyn parryable, but in the end, it was a R1 that finished him off. This whole run was a disaster, but I got to show off some cool glitches. Maybe in the future I should revisit the idea, but actually route it out. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. Also, if you made it this far, might as well subscribe and like the video while I go and kill New Game Plus Asylum demo with this build. Thank you for wasting your time with me.